Tilo, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me, you see it. Just a warning. I don't know where this video and my thoughts may take me, but you've been warned. Twitch.com. That's where you can catch any live streams or any previous live streams. Uh, don't forget, we do got the username at the bottom of the screen. We got merch. And we got Patreon where we watch stuff we can't watch on YouTube for five days a week, man. This is from Origins. Um, life as a little person. I'm interested. Talk to me. Copyright, copyright disclaimer, disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. Imagine if even the simplest of tasks were a huge challenge. I have to improvise to put my bag up. So, this is the step I use. We follow three extraordinary young people who have dwarfism. I just want to have that confidence in me to be able to like work places where I'm not hidden. So I thought I'd stop growing, but I have uh, grown a bit. So yeah, that's good. As they reach major milestones in their lives. As soon as I can get in my own car, do whatever I want, it's, I'm going to be like a different person. I'm going to be like millions of times happier. And find the determination to overcome daily obstacles. My sister obviously reaching for my feet, which can be hard. Shower is really high up, so I can't lower that. We've got lowered light switches here, so I can reach all of these. Learning to make their way in a giant world. The world's not made for um, children or adults with achondroplasia, unfortunately. If I could change the world for her, I would. If I want to do it, I will try and do it. That's how we feel for all our kids. If we could change the world in any way to make them better or make them feel better, we would, all right? It's a tall person's world, but everyone's got the same short life span. So live it. I ain't never heard that saying before, my boy. That gotta be a, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> I feel like this would be interesting. Dorset, okay, it's the town we in. Around 6,000 people in the UK have dwarfism. Really? 28-year-old Jack lives at home in Dorchester with his mum. Everyday tasks like getting dressed are a challenge. It's been my socks on, just got a, obviously it's cold. At the moment my back's that seized up from my from sleeping and probably just as it is every morning. It's just obviously reaching for my feet, which can be hard. Jack has a con I feel like big people got that problem too, like tall people too. I'm six three or six two. But you know, you gotta bend it, you gotta bend a certain way to get them socks on. I wouldn't I can never get my socks on sitting like this. Androplasia. The most common form Which can be hard. Jack has achondroplasia, the most common form of dwarfism. He's found inventive ways around his condition. This is my trusty friend called Claudia. Uh, you get it? And oh, Claude. this yeah, is to help it. me reach certain things. But today, we'll be using my chef bats. How do you get them books up there? Claudia, help. Jack's had over 30 operations to add 8 inches to his legs to improve his mobility. Really? But changes in the weather can cause him pain. The main reason why the temperature affects me is because... Metal. I've had all these leg lengthening operations into my legs. And I've got all these metal pins like that just literally go through... Well, they go through all my bones. It still gives me that little niggling pains. Uh, sometimes like sharp, sharp shooting pains just from the fact of the, the metal contracting in my legs. To you kind of look like Thor. Pull it, pull them together. So 
but it can be hit and miss sometimes. Sometimes I'll, some I'll have good days and then I'll have bad days. Jack works part-time as a chef in a local pub restaurant. He cycles to work to avoid public transport. It's a good exercise. I don't like the public too much. Like, being who I am, I'm judged constantly. Really? That's what society is. And someone's always judging. Uh, obviously, you're passing comments, passing stare, passing giggle. It builds up and builds up and builds up, and then you finally crack and then you think, oh, is that really like it? I, I, I guess they could, I can't tell them how to feel, but I feel like that don't be happening that much here in America. Like, we do not care. <laughs> can't be bothered with it anymore, so I don't tend to take public transport due to that fact. People always ask me the questions like, what do you do differently from like a normal person? Everything. Okay, like, I always get this question. Like, people ask me, um, what do you do differently that a normal person would do? And like, I don't, it's hard to answer that question because it's not like I will, I've, ever, I've never been like of someone of normal stature. It's not like one day I was of normal stature and I knew how to do things and I woke up one morning and then right. I was someone with dwarfism. Right, so it's almost a dumb question when people ask you that type of situation. Y'all can get bro a, little, a, a step stool back there. One of the most important things for me. It looks dangerous. The dizzy heights of the top shelf. <laughs> Jack has worked here for three years, and it's one of the few places he feels safe and not judged. I've accepted who I am, uh, and it's someone. It's not my problem at the end of the day if someone is is taking the piss or taking the mick or whatever. Well, I do need safe havens. I think everyone needs a safe haven, though. But I think more, yeah, I do more so than people with, of normal stature. What is the life as a little... So should I say little person or somebody suffering from dwarfism? Because I heard them say both. What do I say? West Yorkshire. Freya is 15 and lives in Leeds with her parents. My condition, I can get really tired really easily, and that's because uh, my joints uh, are rubbing on each other because I have no cartilage in between my joints, so they rub against each other, which is bone on bone. That's painful. So that's where the pain comes from. You grow it in the cheese, Freya. Freya's mum, Jane knows how physically challenging her condition is. For the follow. I'm not even streaming. So, and I'm still getting followers. That's true love. Prayer's condition um, affects um, affects every single part of the body. Um, there isn't anything that's actually not affected from a feet to her ankles to her knees to her hips. That's it affects crazy. her hands. Um, she gets numbness. She gets pins and needles. A spine is sort of like an S shape. It's not. It's not sort of straight. The head often feels heavy as well. She gets a lot of headaches because with her having a large head on her little shoulders, um, that sometimes you know gives her quite a bit of headaches. But she handles it really well. I've got to say, she's a doer. Um, but yeah, she's a little fighter. She struggles. She has a lot of bad days, but she also has a lot of good days. Today, Freya's walking around like this. Wouldn't it be easier to like, if she's in so much pain all the time, wouldn't it be easier to like, I, I was gonna say it could be in a wheelchair or like one of the mobility scooters, but it's like, you don't wanna put those type of limita limitations on yourself, period, in life. It's having a checkup at Sheffield try. Children's Hospital. As dwarfism is a degenerative condition, doctors need to continually monitor her. Usually I have an x-ray first and then we'll talk about the x-ray in the appointment and we'll talk about what's been going on and what needs to be done or things like that. Hello. 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 Are you alright? Yes, 
<laughs> Freya has a series of x-rays to see how her bones are developing. Yeah, because I want to see. People with achondroplasia have problems with all of their joints. Hi. Hiya. It seems like she walk regular though. Like she just got a lot of joint issues, which is unfortunate. But like, but like no bows in her leg, no like twisting of the hip or anything. Like. Hello, Hiya. Hey, Mr. Korean. Hi. Hi. Just Please meet you. Yeah. Her first appointment is with the orthopedic consultant. So how are we doing? Good, thank you. Good. Yeah. Um, any problems? Um, not any problems as such as that. It's, it's just my normal aches and pains. Okay. Um, and yeah. Do you have any back pain now? Or is, do you need to use the um, electric chair? To... I can walk, but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm finding myself using it more because I get tired more easily. Okay. And I think that might be getting older or something. But um, So when I go out, if it's for um, at least 10 minutes, I'll be using my manual chair, and if I let school, I use my electric chair. Okay. Mm. Do you think the distance that you used to walk earlier and now has decreased, or do you think it has remained the same? Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would. So have yeah. It yeah. Decreased. yeah, it has decreased. Yeah. Yeah. As she grows, Freya's legs and feet positioning are shifting. The left one is nice and straight. Yeah. The right. One is so it's starting to do the bow thing. Bend, but it's okay. You look fit yeah. for your condition, yeah? yeah? You are fit, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. And we'll see you in a year's time. Yeah. Love yeah. life, yeah. Okay. That's fine. I didn't know this was a degenerative condition, so as time goes by, it could get worse. Is what that, what that mean? Eh? Next up, Freya is measured and weighed. That means Freya has grown two inches in the last year. Bye, darling. I thought I'd stop growing because that's what they told me. She could probably be like four feet. But, uh, but yeah, I have uh, grown a bit. So yeah, that's a possibility. Northamptonshire. Nineteen-year-old Jessica is four foot two inches tall. She has a chondroplasia, which causes restricted growth. How old? Nineteen-year-old Jessica 19. is four foot two inches tall. She has a chondroplasia which causes restricted growth. She lives at home with her parents. I don't like the word dwarf. I, I never have done. I don't, I know that is my condition. My condition is dwarfism. But I don't like being described as Jess the dwarf or Jess. Nah, that is crazy. See, so little person is better? Is a dwarf. I don't know why, I just, I like, prefer little person. I think, I feel like it sounds more. More non, non-offending. Yes. I just prefer being called like little Jess or Jess is a little person. Jess has a condition. That's what I prefer. I just don't, I just don't really like using the word dwarf. <laughs> Everyday tasks can prove a challenge for Jess. This is the easiest thing about the shower because they've, this used to be up there. So I had no chance to put this to turn the shower, the heat on. So I put that, flick that on, that's fine. You gotta turn your heat on in the crib for the shower? It ain't automatically. But it's then when you come to here, like I have this step here, which is great. This used to help me when I was younger to get in the bath, because I used to step on here and then get in the bath, it's quite deep. But the shower is really high up, so I can't lower that. I can't lower it down. I can't really change that all the time, because I have to stand on this bit, and that's not, that's not good, that's but it's all slippy and wet. Right. Jess is very close to her mum and dad, but as she approaches her 20s, she wants more independence. Me and my dad have always been like really close. Like, I, t I can tell my dad everything, but I think without my mum, I would be very lost. I think everyone would be lost in life. She's always been overprotective because, because 
um, like of my condition. She's always been like that, and so I think she feels like she has to be like that forever. She's completely different to my, with my brother, and I think I personally think it is because I am who I am. Like, I am a little person. I'm gonna tell you straight off the top, no, it's, I wouldn't say that. I was. It, that's just how daughters and sons is always gonna be treated differently. You give your son way more independence than you give your daughter off to, off rip. Almost as like a toddler, you start that. You always gonna hold your daughter tight, like, oh, that's my baby, no, no, no. But your son, you like, <laughs> not like this, but I, I love you, but go rock out. If you're out and about, I mean, you see people, you know, you see people stare, you see people trying to take photos. Do you? And as a dad, I'm always gonna protect her. I always have done and I always will. When I'm out in public, when I'm shopping, I always used to get really, really anxious about people taking photos, people staring, people following me around the store. I used to be like, why are they doing that? And I know you. What's her IG? Hear me out now, um, respectfully. I used to not want to go out, and I used to beg my mum to take me home. Jess is learning to drive. She wants the freedom to come and go as she pleases without relying on her parents. <laughs> Public transport is a bit of a... You know, how does this happen, though? Like, how does this condition, like, how do you... You know what I'm saying? Like, what happens during the... You know what I'm saying? During the growing stage of an embryo? Or is it, like, just passed down? Or what, like, what happens? She doesn't feel comfortable in public transport on her own. People on the bus that sometimes can be a little bit rude towards her, but, um, you know, if she's with her friends, she's got that confidence. When she's on her own, she's not so confident. Because some people do, you know, some people... I've never seen a little person and no thought has come to my head to show some disrespect. Never, though. Like, I'm talking about never. Unless they, like initiated it on some like let's let's crack jokes type situation then okay we cracking jokes you know what i'm saying but but i've never been the one to like be like oh my god like nah because everybody at the end of the day is a person that got feelings in my opinion people can be rude towards her or stare or you know nudging that Twenty-eight-year-old Jack also relies heavily on the support of his mum, Linda. Ah, uh, yeah, you can sort of see the length of my legs. You can sort of see half the length of of normal, the normal man. You can sort of see half. <laughs> Y'all see the kid in the background? You wild it. The length of. Look at the kid. Of normal, the normal man. <laughs> what for? Um, of average height, so, so I'm taking double steps. Jack will shortly be leaving home to take part in pantomime, 350 miles away in Middlesbrough. What's pantomime? People are looking at me when I'm walking down the street. People are commenting, laughing, whatever, but I've switched it around, turned it to my advantage, so now I do pantomime. They're still doing that same thing, but in a positive way. I don't mind that way because it's in people's enjoyment. It's, their, it's rather than a negative enjoyment, which they're laughing to take the mick, they're laughing because they're enjoying and making them happy. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's only two oh, weeks like on Monday. I know, I have to get packed. Yeah. We'll call and talk every day. Yeah. I promise, man. Yeah. The long walk from the theatre to Jack's digs is a concern for Linda. I thought, I wonder how this is going to be if somebody at a slight disadvantage is walking home alone it's a good half an hour 45 minutes 45 you know, walk minute at walk? night in the dark Crazy. my mum she does worry and i don't think she'll ever stop worrying we have this incredible bond uh because we've been close she's always looked after me she's always been really close to me and she's always loved me for who i am i'm walk i'm not walking 45 minutes Something else got to happen. I'm getting on the public transportation or something. I'm not doing. She's believed in me as well. She's believed that I can 
strive and achieve uh, things that someone of normal proportion can do. And she's given me that extra kick. Made myself, made myself who I've become. She has, she's formed me. She's made me who I am. West Yorkshire, back to Leeds. Freya's parents didn't know she had a chondroplasia until she was born. All the scans and all your so measurements you don't were fine, your arm length was fine, your leg length was fine. So everything showed up really well, yeah? Yeah. And then when you were born, I had to have an emergency section um, because I had preeclampsia. And then okay. your heartbeat was going so fast, you were really trying. My baby mama had preeclampsia, not with, not with, um, not with my daughter, but with her first child. So we, she, we knew what to do, or the doctors knew. Came to push out. Yeah. Um, but I think they discovered that it was your head that was too big. Yeah. So they had to rush me into theatre, and I had to have an emergency C-section. And then. They weighed you, and you weighed six pounds and half an ounce. And your length was 47 centimetres. And I think at that point, when they saw your arms and your legs, and you were only so short, I think they realised then that you had restricted growth. The milestones have always been um, different to the average child. Right. Um, you know, you didn't sit up, did you, till you were one, and she didn't walk till she was two. Um, so all the milestones have been a lot bigger, a lot taking a lot longer. Um, but now Makes we're getting though. there, slow but sure. We've sort of, I think we have certain times where we'll go so long with the confidence and then she might get knocked a little bit and that'll go back a bit. But then the next time it gets a little bit further. Things just get better as we go along, don't we? Freya is in you. I would imagine though, high school is tough. High school can be the one tough spot, you know what I'm saying? Because and be, I would say like middle school, I don't know what you guys call it, but that could be kind of tough, but people are more curious still. High school people get to talking. Year 11 at her local secondary school. Who's gonna have fish chips and uh, Gregor please? Fish chips. When I'm at school, I struggle sometimes if I've had like pee the, the like uh, day before, so then my legs might hurt the day after, so I will use my chair more. Um, but then one day I might be feeling okay, so I might not use my chair as much. So um, it varies really to whatever I've been doing or whatever aches that day. Um, but usually uh, I've got all my friends, and yeah, it's cool. As well as it's cool, you got the option. If I had the option, I'm in the chair daily. It's helping her get around the school. Freya's Chilly. specially adapted chair allows her to elevate herself to the same height as her classmates. My chair moves up and down and like has loads of different cool things. That's raw. How and much is it? It's there? especially good for science because the higher tables, so the chair goes up, so I'm with everybody else. Um, it's actually not that big. It's uh, there's only two sides, um, and then there's a lift at both sides. So if I wanted to walk, I'd still go up in the lift. So it wouldn't really matter. So I'm only walking classroom to classroom. But if I am really okay, then I'll use this. Or if I've got signs, I'll use this. Who's in Dorset? Jess? Today, Jack is moving oh, to Middlesbrough Jack. from his home in Dorset to take part in Panto there. Just packing for Middlesbrough, um, off the pantomime, uh, for close to two months. It's going to be about two months. So I've got to fit in two months worth of stuff into a bag that I can carry on the train. Should when the fun. boys were little, they always went to a pantomime. So I had a, many years of going to pantomimes. Okay. And then I had a few years, but they were both too old for me to take them. 
so I couldn't go for about, you know, several years. But joy, oh joy, the panto season is back because now I can go and watch Jack in them. So I'm happy with that because I love pantomimes. Jack will be making a journey of 350 miles. So how tall is Jack? Four foot eight, they said? Because that's like, I know real people in real life that's just five feet as a dude and they're short. Like Kai Sinat, Deshae Frost. they just five two and they just, you know. Taking three trains and two buses through central London. See you later. Yeah, then later. I will do. When I was 20, I had this Cuban girl. She was 4'10. She's passed away since then. RIP, but yeah. But it was like not like she didn't have no condition. She was just small, short. Go, go. See, I have to improvise. I so use the seat to stand on to put my bag up because uh, I would be unable to reach unless I was to ask someone the next station to give me a hand. Is Change here for bus service to uh, Off Castle and Swanage. Yeah, unless you ask someone to give you a hand, but you don't want to necessarily disturb people right. and rather than drawing attention to yourself as well. It's going to be fun. I'd be wanting to put myself in they sh his shoes. Like, I feel like if I was his size, I'm asking everybody. I want the attention. <laughs> Turn me up. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Talk about it. About the drugs. Oh, yeah. Yes. Drug free is the way to be. Yeah, or the rock. Hopefully a roll. <laughs> oh, okay. Jack Good. enjoys acting and the celebrity that Panto brings. When I get to Panto, I have to change my name on Facebook. Because always people will track you down or... Um, you get these crazy super, well not super, well, they are super fans, but people that come to pantomime and look up, they could, well they've got your name in the, the program and they look, instantly will look it up on Facebook. I'm not changing my name, I'm taking everything that come with this fame. <laughs> and they'll find you, because obviously my real name is on Facebook and it's on the program. <laughs> we all have to change our names around a bit, just, just slightly, because I always they get hundreds of friend requests. I think it's the way they say it, it's like, oh, you're really cute or really good looking for a dwarf. So I'm not good looking if I was a normal height. Hey, listen. Hey. I understand, because people be saying, oh man, you look good for a black guy. Like, like a lot of people used to say that to me. But back when I was younger, but now I'm grown, so it's like, don't give me no backwards compliment. <laughs> but like, shoot, I'm rolling with the punches. That's what you're going to give me? All right, I'm going to take it. I look good for a black guy? Well, let me see. Show me I look good. <laughs> Let's go. I'm using every... My fault. Person. But I'm good looking for in comparison to people with dwarfism. I just, I don't know, it niggles me. It's like, why can't you just say like, oh, you're either good looking or just tell me I'm ugly or just don't say anything at all, you know? But I understand that, though. It grinds my gears a lot, man. A lot, a lot of people still say, like, especially for women, oh, you look good for a black girl. Like, that, that, that is going to get me. If I'm there and somebody says that to anybody I'm with, or, or like, I'm going to be like, what does that mean? Like, like, like that one, it's going to irritate me 100%. <laughs> but if it's, they say it to me, it's like, whatever. But, like, come on, come on now. <laughs> so I understand where he's coming from, what I'm saying. Bag. It's heavy, man. It's tiring. I'm out of breath now. Of it. Like, I still hear that to this day. Like, what is, uh -huh. yeah, it's quite already right, trying to keep up with the crowds as well. You know, I don't want to be this is much slower than everyone else. Like, people start tripping over you. Walking my own place. Jack rushes to get onto a bus to the next station. Nah, 
Gracias. And he's cutting it fine when he reaches King's Cross. You hear a lot of huffing and puffing. <laughs> Good thing I'm going to wound myself up into a bit of a stress now. But I'm just going to go with the flow now. Yeah. Plus, I get very anxious. Because uh, I'm just trying to meet. I hate being late for things. You always have to be prompt. It's pretty hard though when you're tripping up. Yeah, I know, right? That's why whenever I'm out of my comfort zone as well, and trying to walk, well, this is exit only. Nineteen-year-old Jess is learning to drive because she hates getting public transport. But because of previous thing, like, I went, like if I've gone the bus before and someone's like laughed or stared or took a picture, I think I say that's gonna be like that forever. With the, but it's always the young, like the young ones. It's yeah. just, it's just the school kids, and unfortunately, there's a lot of schools around this area, and there's yeah. a lot of kids on the buses. So. I see, uh, it's a school kid thing, isn't it? <laughs> no, I think it is because obviously I am different. I am different. Gonna... She moved to America and like was in a like a California, Florida. Chicago or anywhere, obviously, I and mean, anywhere, I mean, honestly, no one would even look twice. I I think. Question it, but it's how they react sometimes. You don't need to shout anything out. You don't need to shout to they your friends. Doing that? You don't need to nudge all your friends to like look at me. Definitely when I'm on my own as well. Like if they, what about if they were like that? Yeah. Or if they had a difference, or something happened. Like something was different about them, and I started doing that. To, I wouldn't ever do that. If I decided to do that, they won't like it, would they? No. It's no. not nice. No. It's not nice. It helps me when I go out with a friend, like, with my condition, who's more confident with that situation. Cause I'll, That's true. I'll take a little... It sounds like all, like two out of the three, like, have very, very low confidence in it. The 15-year-old girl doesn't seem like she has any confidence in shoes when it comes to it. Like, as far as the public. But she's also still a child. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is a grown woman. She's 19. Buddy is... How how old is... What's his name? Jack? He's older as well. He's like 20. So, I don't know. They've been through more of life. You know? Little notes from them. Yeah. And I'll try and do it myself. Because I'll be like, how are you doing that? How are you, like, coping with this? Yeah. And then they'll tell me. And I'll be like, oh... So then I, I've, really, I've got to find it in me to like, try to do that. Jess has been working part-time. I swear to God, Jess look good. <laughs> I ain't even gonna hold you. Go back, let me talk, talk to me, Jess. I'm gonna put a thumbnail, hear me out. Man. Jess has been working part-time at a fast food outlet for the last two years. The job has really helped lift her confidence. The McDonald's? I've worked at a retailer and I've worked at an estate agent, but I didn't like working in retail because I was on like the shop floor a lot, so I was always like out in the public and I was getting like people, like customers taking photos and like just smiling that's and laughing. At the I'm not gonna lie, that's weird energy. Like people taking pictures of you because of like that's weird, 100%. I'm over here reacting, I'm throwing my little compliment, but like I'm also entertaining the people, but. Like, I feel like that's weird. People, humans are really weird in this earth. Like, taking pictures of, that's weird. That's really uncomfortable. And so I want to be hidden. But you work here as customers here, right? Yes, but they can't see me. I'm behind the window and I'm behind a counter. So they can't see me, right? Like, they can't see me. Nah, they know. Can you have me in, please? Yeah, of course. What's your number? 532. 532. 959. I wouldn't want to be on like out the front here or like lobby host or anything because again it's be, it's in the public so and I feel uncomfortable. Dang. Doesn't that hold you back a bit though? Yeah. Yeah. It, immensely it, probably. It holds me back because I want to do all these different things like I want to be on the front but I can't because of my anxiety and my confidence. So this is the step I use. It helps me just like see the screen better and 
example, that's their like, let me use this. It's helpful. Hello, welcome to McDonald's. Can I take order, please? Even though this is a safe place for Jess, she still worries about how people will react to her. I just want to have that confidence in me to be able to do like workplaces where I'm not hidden. But I don't want to be hidden. Because I think I head all the time. I think if I go out in front and if I see like, someone sees me, they're going to laugh or they're going to stare, they're going to point, they're going to take photos. And yeah, just, this is, I just like, think that's like, really sad, like, there's no point in going on front because that's going to happen. That's messed and up. It, and, it do, and I'm right, it does happen. Like, I can't jump straight into being like this like 100% confident person with everything because it all just won't work. People always ask me why I'm so confident. It's because like when I was young, I think I think my mom instilled a lot of confidence in me. She had to because she does it with my daughter. So she had to have done it with me. You know what I'm saying? So it's like no matter what you say about me, I know how I feel about myself. You know what I'm saying? I love me. So like I see comments all the time. People don't never say nothing in person. Let's never get that up. <laughs> Let's never get that obscured or anything. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but yeah, man. Mm. Plus, I've been on every side of the spectrum. Like, as far as like, I've been very skinny. I've been very. I've been bigger than this. Like weight wise, I've been. In the best shape of my life, I've been five percent body fat. Like, I, and I, in all of those aspects, all of those walks, I've always got women. It ain't never been a thing for me, but, but that's the confidence that I have in myself. Though, you know what I'm saying? Confidence that I have in myself always is gonna shine. You know. And that's not even on the cocky stuff. I know it could be miscued as cocky, but it's like, I'm just saying, you know. So I've got to take little steps at a time to get to, to get to a point where I can go out on a shop floor and not care what people think. But right now, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there, but it'll take time. I'm also 6'2", with, with a nice smile, and so I've been told. And I got a beard and a few tattoos. That could play a part in it as well. But. That's a crazy cave, my ankle. That's crazy work on the camera. My fault. Back to Leeds. 15 year old Freya is three foot, 10 inches, and is unlikely to get any taller than that. Cap, she grew two inches in the last year. When I was years. a lot younger, I, I don't think I realised um, that I was small. I, was, I would just like be like anybody else um, with everybody else. If I wanted to do something, I'd do it. But now you're learning that some things you can't do, some things you can do, but others can't do. It's all different, and say riding a ride or a roller coaster or whatever, you do learn that you can't, you might not be able to go on that because of your height or for any other reason, uh, which is frustrating. I think that's it. There are no such frustrations at home, though, as her parents have made many adaptations around the house to make life easier for her. I'll start in here. Um, well, we've got lowered light switches here, so I can reach, they're all the same height, so I can reach all of these. So, yeah, uh, fine. And it's an easy, it's an easy click, so it's like, it wouldn't hurt my hand or my grip or anything like that. So in here, we've got a lower light switch as well. Because got joint issues. Pull it on, because we don't want to get anything wet. Uh, in here, also, we've got a seat. So if I'm in the shower and I've got tired legs, I can sit down. Oh, then, the whole bathroom is the shower? Like... There's no curtain needed, eh? Shower. So there's a lower shower for me, and then a big shower for my mum and dad. Or cool. they use that as well. So that lowers up and down, whichever height you need it. And then uh, the tap, um, lower sink and the tap is an easy, easy <sighs> one, because, like, the normal taps, my grip wouldn't be able to uh, get round it. So it is to do my joints, because they're uh, not, strong, uh, not strong than everybody else. So... Um, and also my smaller hands, so the joints and a lot that strong. 
Today, Freya is off to her weekly drama and dance group. I'd probably... Freya, I love her mindset. Like, she understands that there's restrictions because of her height, but the things that she can do, she will go at it head first. Like, she's gonna try. <laughs> love it, man. Love to see that energy. Say, I, that's all. I love Jabbit. She ain't ducking no smoke with the regular world. <laughs> uh, and then when we found this, uh, I was like, oh, I really want to try it out. And ever since then, I've loved it. So, so yeah. Sometimes, very rarely, but sometimes I do sit out of dancing if it's a bit high impact. But usually I enjoy it and I'm fine. Growing up um, is okay. I'm learning my limits. I'm learning what I, I can do, what I can't do, uh, such as sports and PE at school and my drama class. If I want to do it, I will try and do it. If I can, See what I'm saying? I'll try my best to do that. Uh, so my no as I can. There's so, no such thing as I can. If it takes me a while to get there to do a certain activity or a certain sport or a certain thing, I will. I will get to it and do it. I will. I won't stop. I won't stop um, achieving and get into where I want to be. <laughs> Jack is travelling to Middlesbrough. He's missed the train he planned to get. So it's rush hour by the time he finally gets on board. Right, we're gonna wait, we'll just wait here for everyone to kind of settle down, I think. Busy? Yeah, very busy. So now this is the point where, where do, I, do I stand or do I? So standing here is not an option for you, is it? Uh, is it not particularly, no. It's not something I would want to do at all. So. No, it's not really an option, not especially for such a long distance that so we got to go. Let's go. Sorry, mate. Thank you, I think. Let me tell you one thing about me, buddy. I'm sitting down. The only thing that can make me get up is honestly a handicapped person or a pregnant woman. 100%. Or anybody with a child. And they'd be like, ah, oh, because I understand. There's two seats there, but... But I feel like in his case, like, nobody would know unless he spoke up, though. Because, like, if I seen him on the train, I wouldn't know that he needs to sit down. I wouldn't know. You know what I'm saying? And I, would, I wouldn't get up. <laughs> like, I told you, me, I've never looked at a short, like, a, a littler person and be like, oh, he's handicapped. I've never seen it that way. So these are the only seats. It's got no... Okay, go for it. Let's do it. Thank you know. That was, that was like far too... I thought it was going to be easy. It's so busy. And that was far harder than I was expecting it to be. You're out of breath. Yeah, very bad. I'm sweating as well. Finally. I'm not going to lie, this is highly educational. Because like, I feel like a lot of us are ignorant to this type of stuff. Like me, you could tell I'm ignorant to it. Like yeah. Seven hours after waving his parents goodbye, Jack arrives in Middlesbrough. We made it. We've done it. We're here. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Thank you. you. All right. Well, and there to welcome him to his new home right, are his fellow cast members. Oh, yeah, I made it, man. Let's go. Oh, look at you, the bearded wonder. Yeah. yeah, right. Sir, how are you, babe? And here's my, my home for the next month or two. It's all right, isn't it? Double bed. Lose yourself in there, mate. <laughs> The plenty of room for someone you else. Run. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? There's nothing. Okay. <laughs> that is going to cause a problem without Claudia now. Oh, Claudia. Oh. You see? Yeah. So I might have to purchase one without my claw. Yeah. So yeah, that's no. <laughs> there's no way. 
so we might have to improvise by finding a step or buying a step or might just have to buy another Claudia Mark II because I can't actually ask, I wouldn't be able to ask anyone else to reach that for me because I'm like the tallest one here <laughs> and they're the ones that have to ask me to reach stuff so I wouldn't be able to rely, I haven't got my mum to rely on to reach stuff down for me if I, if I don't have my Claudia with me. Today, Freya and her mum are shopping for one particularly special item. A dress for her end of school prom. Look at the length, it's perfect. That looks like it's made to measure that. Mm. Perfect length, isn't it? <laughs> I like that. Turn around. Can you see the back bit? If you look, if you can <coughs> turn around, look. But this is a nice detail. And this is nice, but you're covered up, but not covered up. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's lovely. It's quite nice, isn't it? They're obviously really short dresses because it's full length on Freya. So I must admit, I didn't think we, I didn't think we'd be trying any on that was the right length. <laughs> What's the mirror? Big mirror. <laughs> Oh, that's nice. Ooh. Nice blue one. Ooh. So that goes like that, you see, that's... <laughs> that's really nice. I actually do, it looks nice. I like that as well. Uh, yeah, good, I like it. It fits better than other ones. I struggle um, like here. I get in dresses and things, because like, if I'm in the kids' section, I'm in the older section, but one bit will be too big, one bit will be too small, but then if I go into adults, like, it's all big and it's all... So it's really difficult to, like, um, test what you're going to get. It's hard. It's Thank you. you. You too. Bye. Bye. Back at home, Mum reflects on the unique challenges Freya will always face. Everything she does, really, she does need help in some way. Um, I suppose it's like living in a giant world, isn't it, really? Um, I try to picture myself living in a lot bigger world and imagining how hard that would be. Um, and yeah, I think it'd be pretty difficult. The world's not made for um, children or adults with achondroplasia, unfortunately. So everything, um, everything that she does is a challenge. I watch her sometimes getting ready in the morning just to face the day. Um, and I just think, you know, that she must be tired before she actually sets out to school. You know, all the things she does before going to school, it's, it's a challenge. So by the end of the day, I'm not surprised she's absolutely shattered. So, yeah, if I could change the world for her, I would. Nineteen-year-old Jess is learning to drive. Until she passes her test, she's reliant on her parents. Man, I don't even want to... Teaching the child how to drive. Oh my days, I ain't ready for that. I am going for my driving lesson. Um, they don't teach all that in school in the UK, they teach us it in school. And yeah, my mum's taking me today. What's that for? This is my cushion to help me with driving, pushes me forward a bit and keeps me like comfortable. So I take this. So it's easier. Get your driving, get your car on the road. Mm. Then what? And then I'll be going everywhere. You'll be gone? Yeah. And you won't need mum and dad? Taxi of mum and dad? No. <laughs> I'm going to let you know, little Jess. <laughs> That's cap. You're gonna always need mom and dad, and they're gonna always be there for you 100%. As much as they can talk as much crap as they want, but they're gonna be there. Is it not gonna like scale though? That'll be out like, all the time. Yes. And it'll be different because I, I will have. I because will. I won't be at home as much. <laughs> like at all. I'll be texting you. Where are you? Text me back. <laughs> Where are you? I'm, you know, I'm driving. I can't. Have <laughs> you left yet? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't take it back. Text when you're leaving. <laughs>
the driving instructor has a specially adapted car to teach people of restricted growth. So I've got um, pedal extensions to um, help me drive the car. Um, and then I've got <coughs> back rest and then like a kind of like a neck rest. And it just like supports my neck and again just keeps me upright like this is doing. Safe to go. Yeah, it's cool though, cause when you when you when you get your own car, I'm pretty sure you can like customize it, so you ain't gotta do all that. Go. Yep. Set up late. Clear, good, well done. Nice looking over your shoulder there. That's excellent. Just a little tickle on the gas, cause the road's a bit a bit frosty at the minute. Once we got on the main roads, better. While she has her lesson, Mum Jo reflects on how much this means to Jess. She's given herself a bit of pressure, I think, because she just wants to be able to do it. And because she, because she can drive, it's just the, the test and the theory um, that she's, you know, obviously all kids are anxious about taking any sort of yeah. test. But she really enjoys, as soon as she's behind that wheel, she knows this is what she wants. That's OK, you wait. Is it clear? Yeah. OK. And then keep your seat. Turn into your lane, Jess. Yeah, look. Slow down a little bit, that's it. Get across, look. And we're gonna go right round to the fourth exit this time. It's a roundabout? The drive it Oh yeah, we, anybody can mess this it's up. It's another step of her leaving. Her leaving home, I think, will be, it will give her that nudge to think, you know, yes, I can drive now, so now I can do a lot more on my own. She won't need mum anymore. Turn right. Yeah, so we can't see, so what do we need to do? Move forward a bit. Yeah. Make sure it's safe. Yep. Yeah, good. Well done. Excellent positioning. Jess makes us proud all the time. But when you see these the obstacles that she, she deals with and just seeing her again today in the car, it's like, oh my gosh, she looks really, really comfortable. And I can see her pulling off the driveway soon and me sort of waving her off, you know, and thinking, she does all right. She does all right. Yeah, she does good. Left, look. You signalled left. I was going on there. Yeah, I know he was. I will get that roundabout. Don't worry, we'll do roundabouts. We'll practice them until we get them. You, you, you're doing a lot better, so don't worry. Yeah? As soon as I can get in my own car, do whatever I want, it's, I'm going to be like a different person. I'm going to be like millions of times happier. Living in a tall world, living in this world, come on Jess, you know, you can do this. There might, it might be a different way of doing something, you can do this. So she's ready for the big world the big, out there. Real. Middlesbrough. In Middlesbrough, it's the first day of Jack's rehearsals to play Happy in Snow White. Hello, how good you morning. Doing? Very good, how are you? Yeah, very good. Do you want to come see my room now? It's all sorted. No, it's all you. Oh, what, how do you mean? What have you done to it? Oh, I just put all my man just put all my clothes in it. Let's have a look. Pretty cool, man. Right? <laughs> look, see? I've managed it. It's all neat. I've managed to get up there. How? By <laughs> using my Claudia Mark II. There we go. See? And then just like so. It's perfect, isn't it? <laughs> I've managed to have suss it all out. Thanks to this, I've seemed to have hacked it already so far. But yeah, sometimes you do have to relearn a lot of things and just thinking about how you do them is a daunting task. Well, it can be. I've done it. <laughs> That's it, now life's sorted. <laughs> Being in Panto has given Jack a new perspective on his condition. The role is obvious for people of my condition because it's so I the seven dwarfs. And hello, I'm a dwarf, so right. they need dwarfs and that's what people are going to see when they go and see the, the pantomime. The door is open. I think we have an intruder. Intruder door! <laughs> People are 
when they go and see Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, they want to see dwarfs, actual real life in the flesh dwarfs. And that is a great feeling because they're actually chanting and cheering you and joining in because you are what they want. So yes, I do do feel I do feel wanted. I am wanted. No, you don't. Go on, up you go. Okay, I got a new way of life out it. here. It. And it's great to see people and talk and everything. Weird. I want to take acting classes so bad. I'd be, I'd be so serious in there. Like I'd be having fun, but like it'd be like I'm not playing. I'm trying to get movie roles. If people of same condition as me, because then because we help each other out in that way as well. I always used to try and avoid any, like, talking to another dwarf because it used to remind me of what I am. But now it's, like, the greatest thing I've ever done is meeting these people. Dude, um, you got to rock out with your own. about our conditions, about the different problems. That, cause exactly. Because we don't all have the same problems, you know? We all have similar problems. So what is chicken ding? Well, you get the chicken, put it in the microwave. 30 seconds later, chicken ding! Smiley. <laughs> yes, I know, shut up. Jack hopes that acting might prove to be his calling in life. She won't find her here. Do we make the princess days? Yeah. yeah! That is technically my course for the future now. And I'm on this, I'm on this track. Where Good for I'm you, man. Good for you, just girl. Follow, follow it down the rabbit hole. It's a tall person's world, but everyone's got the same short life span, so live it. Jess is continuing with two hours of driving lessons a week, and she is now working full time. A week? Freya has found her prom dress and is excited about the future after school. And now that panto season is over, Jack is hoping to get more acting gigs. Put a dash in there. That's cool. I'm not even gonna lie. Very informative. I'm gone.